Hey, it's Marcia here from Fresh Spoke, and today on Speaking of Food, we're sitting down with the Honorable Alex Nadal, who is the Member of Parliament for Oromodonte, Barrie, and Springwater. He also happens to be the former Deputy Critic for the sharing economy. So why are we sitting down with the former critic of the sharing economy? Well, you tune in and find out. So welcome to Speaking of Food, and I'm thrilled today to have um, the Honorable Alexander Nadal with us um, talking about the sharing economy. And we're going to get into a little bit about why Fresh Spokes uh, Speaking of Food is talking about the sharing economy and how we're going to walk you through and linking those two concepts up today. But first of all, I just want to welcome, um, and may I call you Alex? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, great. Um, so I'd like to welcome Alex uh, to the podcast, and I'm going to give you a, a quick, a very, very quick snapshot um, of Alex's political career and what has brought him into this conversation about uh, the sharing economy. So um, Alex started out uh, in his political career actually as on city council for Barrie, correct? In 2006. So you're a bit of a veteran now, I guess. I am now. I am. <laughs> municipal politics. Wasn't enough for you. You drank the Kool-Aid um, and you moved on to federal politics. And, and uh, Alex represents uh, the district of uh, Oromodonte. Barry and Springwater in the Canadian House of Commons. And also he has uh, been in the roles of official opposition critic, deputy critic of innovation science and the um, economic in, and economic development. He has also held the position of the official opposition critic of the new sharing economy. And now Alex has taken on a new challenge, which is uh, as the uh, deputy critic for youth, sports, and persons of disabilities. But the reason we actually connected about this was you actually were in my office um, giving us a certificate because we had a summer student with us um, that um, was funded through uh, the summer jobs program federally. And of course, you asked the million dollar question of is, so what is it that you do here? And I think I kind of got you a little bit a take back when I actually told you uh, what we were up to here with, with well, Freshbook. I, I think we were a little confused on the way over, to be honest with you, and uh, going, you know, what is this th exactly? Because I'd heard, you know, through the grapevine, and we'd been able to meet a couple of times in public, but you don't really get to go in depth into what uh, it is that you're doing as a business, and it yeah. piqued my interest as soon as you got into it. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and you, I think it was just like, and, and I think what was interesting for me is, um, is... I don't run into very many people who get as excited about the sharing economy yet as I do, um, but you were. And so I think that's one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on is, is to get that sort of macro vision federally of, of you know, what's, what's the thinking federally on the, on, the, on the sharing economy? And then, of course, how does that drill down into, you know, communities like Barrie, Toronto, and even, you know, east and west coast as well? Certainly, you know, for for me as a, and I try not to be too partisan, but I think that uh, that that this is an area where partisanship matters because, uh, as a conservative, competition is a major uh, philosophical idea that we support. We want to grow competition in the marketplace. We want to grow it because it's good for consumers. Uh, it's good on many ends. It's good for pricing to consumers. It's good for service to consumers. Uh, competition drives efficiencies in the marketplace. Uh, which obviously make it a better place to do business, a better place to live. It increases quality of life mm -hmm. as a whole. And what the sharing economy is doing uh, across each sector of our economy, as the disruptors come up, it's driving those efficiencies. Your business is built on these efficiencies, these, uh, these efficiencies that have been found, and therefore you are new competition to an existing marketplace and saving your, your clients money, saving your clients time, uh, finding a new way to provide uh, the services, new depots to deliver goods to, to, uh, to allow restaurants and, and, and others to, uh, to purchase from. So it's a very philosophical position I have on the sharing economy. Uh, is there going to be growing pains that come through it? Yes. Are those growing pains necessary? Yes. Are they good in the end? Yes. Are there going to be people who uh, are perhaps their business model is pushed to the side? Absolutely. But that's all a part of a, of a growing economy and one that is morphing into the digital revolution that is taking place. And if you, there's certain 
uh, people out there you'll, you'll speak to who, who say what's happening right now one day will be recorded as as big as the industrial revolution that I took agree. place yeah. in Great Britain. Yeah. And uh, we need to recognize that. We need to own it. Uh, if, Can if the Canadian economy wants to continue to be as competitive as it is, uh, we need to own it and we need to embrace it. And, and you know, quite frankly, that hasn't happened mm -hmm. across the board yet. And in fact, some of the politicians who've paved the way for politicians like myself who are pro-sharing economy aren't around anymore. Tim Hudak is now uh, with uh, uh, Aurea, mm -hmm. uh, the Real Estate uh, Commission. He put a lot of time and effort into uh, legislation on the, mm -hmm. the sharing economy, cutting edge stuff. Um, and uh, and unfortunately, he's, he's no longer in public public service. So we are falling behind mm -hmm. uh, in Canada. Uh, we don't offer the same types of benefits to you as a business who's you know, entered the uh, sharing economy tech landscape as other countries do in Great Britain. They have two uh, sharing cities that are funded by the federal government. Basically, the, the federal government said we will underpin, we'll underwrite any losses that occur because you're trying to be a, a pilot project sharing city. Right. Uh, in the U.S., they've put considerable funding into to the uh, sharing economy, specifically into the finance sector, uh, business to business lending, mm -hmm. uh, uh, underwriting of personal mortgages through online platforms, which are things that are basically illegal here in Canada. Right. Right. Um, yeah, for sure. At least on the the mortgage side. So yeah. we're behind. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And I, I would agree with you. And I think um, so. So when you start to look at the landscape, you know, in the European landscape, you start to look at the U.S. and sort of their aggressiveness um, in opening up and, and developing policy around the sharing economy. You know, there's no question about it. So so let's let's take a step back here, because I think one of the things that I'm hearing a lot of confusion about um, overall is everybody sort of ties technology to the sharing economy. They sort of say, okay, well, we have to sort of tackle this issue of the sharing economy, and they immediately think it's, it's about tech. Um, and so can you, in your sort of, in, in your position, in your experience, provide a, us with sort of what you perceive to be what you would call a layman's definition, or what is the sharing economy? So what I, uh, what I would consider it is, um, is the sharing economy is where, uh, for, for the most part, is, is tech oriented. Um, and I'll give you an example of what the sharing economy has done to existing uh, uh, ways of life, quite right. frankly. Uh, very easy one to, to pick up on is uh, in Muskoka, which is just north of, of our homes here in, in Barrie, uh, people used to rent their cottages out. Mm -hmm. And they would go to a hydro pole, they'd have a piece of paper, <laughs> it would have you know 10 listings of their phone yeah. number and name, you rip it off, you call them, say, I want to rent your cottage for the week and move on. Mm -hmm. uh, that is now Airbnb. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Uh, there is no difference between the way the business was done then and now, except the hydro pole is no longer getting punctured every time somebody staples a piece of paper to it. Uh, and the ease of booking uh, is, you know, is much more. I don't have to leave a, a voicemail for you if you had it back then. Yeah. Uh, I, I get to, to just book it then and there. Right. Uh, directly and so it, it's to me that is the perfect example of what the sharing economy has done yep. it has brought the the excess capacity that exists in a certain sector mm -hmm. uh, and through a digital platform connects it with the user right, um, right. and and it, it doesn't necessarily created new sectors mm -hmm. it is created connectivity between the user uh, and the the seller uh, the capacity that exists and uh, so it's interesting when we hear people complain about the sharing economy, uh, you know, it's disrupting this and disrupting that. It's actually, as far as I can see, uh, it is business as usual in a much more efficient manner. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and definitely. just because our laws don't recognize these efficiencies before they take place, yeah. well, how could they? Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're wrong. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the other thing, the sharing economy that's, you know, a characteristic of the sharing economy that is, we don't fully understand as of yet is this, is it's doing away with international borders. Mm -hmm. um, the, the reality of, well, you're in this jurisdiction doing this business is becoming less and less and less important, which is a complex issue for people like me who are in government and have to you know, make decisions based on those borders because we can't make decisions mm -hmm. that really influence in a direct way mm -hmm. what's happening outside of our borders. So. It's putting a lot of pressure on the traditional characteristics of business, 
Uh, but the sharing economy is a very, very simple concept uh, that is replicated in many, many, many different sectors. Mm-hmm. Uh, yours being one of them. Yeah, but I think one of the things that I find interesting and and um, is is I I am still absolutely amazed at how quickly the sharing economy is taking hold in the business to consumer sector, right? Mm-hmm. Connecting consumers to other consumers, and I guess it because it it's it's there is more agility there within that marketplace. But I think on the business to business side, you know, every time I have the opportunity to get up in front of people and talk and they always say, you know, the old question you always get when you're on a panel is, what do you think is sort of the next, you know, big disruption or what do you think is the next big thing that people need to watch for? And I always say the sharing economy because to me, I don't, you know, I don't think that the business to business sector uh, really understands how this can potentially impact and disrupt sectors within the business to business sector and and even their government and and government itself i think about the excess capacity that sits within our government assets and how underutilized they are so we have buildings that sit empty for hours on end and maybe used you know two or three hours a week so 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 Where's where's that focus the, there to drive that sharing economy into those sectors? So so there is a focus. You know, one of the things that we were looking at was what you get back. Uh, is there an encouragement to use the most efficient means as a government representative? And so so I'm not going to take tackle mm-hmm. government as a whole. I want to use yeah. this as an example. Uh, it's interesting. If I use an Airbnb, I get fifty dollars a night back from, from from the federal government. So I go to Ottawa. I spend thirty weeks a year, mm-hmm. uh, a, a year there on average. Um, I'm encouraged to use hotels because I, you know, I book, get a good deal because I spend so much time there. Uh, but let's say it's 150 bucks a night, 120 bucks a night. Uh, that's what I get back as an individual. But if I go and use an Airbnb that costs me $75 a night, mm-hmm. I can only get 50 back. So this is a, a long-standing policy because it's a private residence. This is a long-standing policy that has a considerable impact on the federal purse. Absolutely. Uh, because yeah. if that's the case in every division of government, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're talking about what amounts to probably hundreds of millions of dollars a year uh, when you consider the amount of employees the federal government has. Wow. Um, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's, a, that's a place where we should be embracing yeah. the sharing economy yeah. and, and saving the taxpayer money. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Ubers, I can I can get back. Uh, it's it's a little bit different, but Ubers, I can get back. We need to, as a government as a whole, not just be a user of Airbnb. We need to be a supplier. There are hundreds of buildings that we have uh, that we could be, you know, utilizing, uh, putting out there for rental or whatever. Yep. Uh, and 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 uh, you know, building up the. Uh, the demand for use of our buildings because the, the demand is there in many different places across the country, especially places where the federal government has uh, a uh, footprint uh, that not, is not necessarily a place that you would want to go and open up a facility like the one we're in today because there just isn't the overall pent up demand uh, right. within that market. Uh, so, so there is uh, there is certainly opportunity for us to recoup yeah. or just provide public spaces. Yeah, for sure. And and I mean I mean ultimately from a responsibility perspective, those are public assets, right? You want to as a as a member of public, you want to see those assets being used to their full, full potential for sure. More than that, you know, more than that is that it's environmentally sustainable. And you know, it's interesting because uh, oftentimes conservatives get slagged as as not being environmentally uh, thoughtful, not not taking it, putting into the equation enough when we're making our decision uh, decisions on policy. Uh, but I can tell you this, and you know, locally we've had things like Lake Simcoe Protection Act, but those are those are one-offs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So where is the future of conservative environmental policy? I think sharing economy plays a huge role. Mm-hmm. You know, it's about finding excess capacity that exists today and aligning that with. Uh, the the need that is out there, which will then prevent the need to build uh, more stuff mm-hmm. to Absolutely. to knock down more trees yeah. and yeah. get the wood to yeah. you know whatever it is that that is needed in terms of materials. Um, it, it it does reduce our carbon footprint when we are increasing the use of existing capacity versus building 
new capacity. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you know, we started this whole exercise around uh, shared delivery, you mm -hmm. know, the, and, and I, I w always remember reading um, Collaborative Consumption, which was um, written by the founder of, of um, Oh, ride share program Zipcar um, mm -hmm. in the U.S. I mean, she was so ahead of the curve, right, in terms of what she developed there and the and the hurdles she went through. Just because for a lot of those individuals, it was so mind bending. And I think and and so, do you really think, as far as sort of where you see the biggest hurdles are, do you think these are, um, are is this just attitude? Is this a cultural shift that needs to be made, or is this a is there is it cultural? Is it policy? Is it financial? Like where where do we start to try and as a country? Um, uh, challenge our, our it, p politicians and folks around us to think outside the box and start thinking about the sharing economy. Well, look, a cultural shift is not something the government can control, if you ask me. You know, uh, big government people believe that they can determine what the <laughs> fabric of society will be. I believe the, the people in society <laughs> determine what that fabric is, and the government needs to react to it. Uh, what we've seen case after case after case is that people are using these products already. Yep. Airbnb exists. It's been so successful, people want to buy apartment buildings and turn them into basically Airbnb hotels. Do mm -hmm. I agree with that 100%? No. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can tell you that uh, it is out there, it exists, Canadian people are using it, foreigners are using it when they come to Canada. The same with Uber, the same with, with your own platform. Mm -hmm. Do these things fit within the current laws as we see them? Uh, I would say in many points, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't agree with people when they say, well, the taxation laws uh, don't uh, you know, account for that person who's driving an Uber. They mm -hmm. do. Our taxation laws in Canada, whether we like to admit it or not, this is an honor system. Mm -hmm. It requires you to tell the yep. government how much you earn. Yep. The government doesn't necessarily know that 100% mm -hmm. of the time. Uh, the difference between the sharing economy and existing economies is it's virtually impossible to do cash mm -hmm. in the sharing economy because there is a uh, transactional record that's held online by the mm -hmm. companies. Do we need to talk to those companies as government and say, look, this is the governance structure we're going to put in place. We need reporting from you to mm -hmm. be able to track the taxes, etc." Mm -hmm. Probably. But it's much easier to do that through the sharing economy than it is to do it on a transaction by transaction basis yep. when you don't know whether it's check yep. or or uh, cash. Mm -hmm. uh, good one is the general contractors, right? Mm -hmm. You know, when, when that's done through a sharing economy platform, it's easy to understand. When that's done on the road yep. by somebody out there, I mean, the yep, government likes absolutely. to think they're big in there. They're not. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, that's been going on for generations. The right. honor system's there. And yeah, there's you've got this digital footprint that you basically just have to follow the crumb trail and, and the dollars are there. And and and, uh, and I would agree with you. I think also the other part of this that always excites me is like, you know, our definition and what we've always used is this notion of, you know, that this is this is an ability for, for individuals to connect so that revenue flows through the ecosystem and into the wallet of mm -hmm. where it can do the most good, right? It, 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 it's, it's that wallet that actually drives the economy. That's, that is the wallet of individuals um, that actually spend money with other businesses and contribute to their, to their economy. And that's, that's the well, part that's for right. me that I think, you know, people need to understand that those folks that are, you know, I use, I use Airbnb all the time, right, Colin? We're always, all fresh folks, that's our policy. You know, yeah. we, we don't go to hotels. We only Airbnb because it's A, we're a startup. It's affordable. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we just, we, we love that a feeling of, of uh, conspicuousness, right? That you have somebody at the other end. So there's, you're building community. These individuals are oftentimes, you know, ambassadors for their community. They have a passion right. about what it is that they're doing. So, so I'm with you 100%. And, and the part for me that I think is so critical that we need to drive through is, is that notion that at the end of this day, the buck stops where it can do the most good mm -hmm. and where it can contribute back to its economy. So, you know, we talk all the time about the difference between, you know, buying from, you know, a large entity versus buying from a local food producer. We're talking about the difference between a 1.8 cents contribution to your community versus 45 cents in the sharing economy with our platform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you like your roads, you like your schools, <laughs> you like your infrastructure. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's the taxes of those folks that are going to pay for all of that, that are going to help us grow as a community. 100%. And the, the reality is when you look at the sharing economy and the local, uh, the, the local flow through of dollars, mm -hmm. uh, it is substantial. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the reality is 
that my, my belief is that hotels will change. They will change. Some of them are already embracing Airbnb. Yep. You know? And does it mean they come out with their own system that directly competes? Maybe it does. Mm -hmm. That's good for the consumer. Airbnb comes into the space, forces hotels to compete. Hotels come back, go, we have to compete. It drives down costs, it drives mm -hmm. up service. I think the, the other thing that's interesting about the sharing economy is that there's been this traditional, you know, creative class that everybody talks about. Um, is it, uh, I think it's Richard Florida or someone like that, that uh, I heard speak on it uh, a few years ago with the, the chamber in the city of Barrie. And, you know, I look at the creative class and it's like, well, who's driving this, this sharing economy? It is the creative class mm -hmm. because what they're doing is they're looking at problems mm -hmm. uh, that people don't even know exist. Mm -hmm. And the problem is usually time related. Yep. And you say, how do I do that quicker, better? Mm -hmm. uh, how do I do it more effectively? How do I mm -hmm. show that you are saving both time and money? Because, yep. you know, for businesses specifically, at the end of the day, those are one and the same. Time yeah, is money. For sure. uh, and, you know, I can understand why that class would want to stay in an Airbnb. There's creativity on the other side. Mm -hmm. There's new things experienced. You don't know. When you're in the sharing economy, the thing is that it's, you don't have to be an expert in the field that you're going into. You can stumble upon an issue mm -hmm. and immediately fix it because mm -hmm. the, it's the, the digital platform that is usually the connector yeah, for sure. uh, between yeah. A and B. Yeah, and I, think, and, I, and I think that's the part where I think people get confused, right? They think that sharing economy equals technology when in fact sharing economy is enabled by technology yes. and 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 that's really it's really you know and and for us technology is really the tool what our business is about uh, moving local wholesale local food that's that's what the business is about we just happen to use a platform to make those connections between buyers and sellers and it's the same with uber and it's the same with skip the dishes mm -hmm. you know which i absolutely love i think they're doing a fantastic job for small independent restaurants in terms of you know, you know, um, filling that gap of, you know, fast, on, you know, on-demand delivery and a, for a reasonable rate Uber and so eats. forth. Uber Eats is yeah. another one that's really cool. Um, and, you know, and, and Skip the Dishes is a Canadian success story, yeah. right? They, 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 they sold to a UK company for like a, a billion. But so is Uber, right? And this is the problem, <laughs> yeah, with, yeah. With, this is the problem with the Canadian economy, yeah. right? Uh, for where we're going. Uber was the idea of a person from Calgary. Right? Well, that is true. Yeah, and, for and, sure. And go south to get the capital. Right. That's where you have go to. Go south <laughs> to, to, to get the expertise. Yeah. yeah. You know, you sit there and you go, there's been a lot of Canadian success stories that are no longer Canadian success stories. Yeah. And that's a huge issue. Yeah. It's an issue because of our regulation. It's an issue because the capital's not there, mm -hmm. but it always comes back to regulation. So can I whine for a minute? Yeah, I, absolutely. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to whine. Okay, do we so, have any cheese yeah. to go with it? Or? <laughs> yeah, that's what we should have. We, yeah. should, we, we should drink wine while we do these things. <laughs> yeah. um, local wine. I, I, yeah. I would come back for the wine specifically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> local wine only. Um, but, you know, I think w now that I've had this experience of being across the border, and, and uh, this is my third tech startup, but I actually never got out of Canada with my first two. And now that I'm, you know, in the, in the U.S., I have to say that I do see there's a significant difference just um, in the overall, um, the, the pace with which business gets done mm. is one. But I think the other thing is in investing in, um, in startups and investing in um, sharing economy concepts and in, at the idea stage and at the early stage. Now, having said that, our platform is, you know, is, is fully iterated um, at, to a first version. So we're down there um, with a platform that's you know in the marketplace. However, I think one of the things that I notice incredibly differently um, from whether it's a government-funded organization, whether it's a private investor, um, we are so risk adverse here um, yes. in Canada, and they are risk tolerant. And I think ultimately, you know, the, we are, we make decisions because we are afraid to make a mistake. They make a decision because they're afraid to miss out. And and that I think is a huge difference. And so while I you know, might struggle here as a startup in the sharing economy to raise a million dollars, that's very difficult here for for an early yeah. stage company. Down there, me raising a million down there would be. 
10 million, 20 million, you know, it, there's a significant difference. And, yeah. and I don't know what the full answer to that is because I think it's a complex problem. But, you know, somebody's got to step up and start to sort of lead the charge to start to provide um, in, in an environment in which companies like ours that are really um, out there testing this concept of the sharing economy can get that kind of support. So I would say that this is a national problem and the national problem is not necessarily a problem all of the time. Let me explain that. So it's, it's my belief that the Canadian culture is one that is risk adverse. Mm -hmm. You know, why did our banks survive 2008 yeah. better than anyone else? Because we're regulated. <laughs> because we were regulated through the union. Yeah. Um, the flip side of that is, you know, so we were we were preserved during a downturn, uh, but we're also reserved during an upturn, mm -hmm. right? An uptick. So, you know, you look at our banking system and you say, it was very strong, uh, we, we, we didn't get hit as hard, but the flip side of that is we aren't taking advantage of the opportunities uh, that are being taken advantage of uh, elsewhere. So there's a few things that are happening. Number one is there's a review of the Canadian Bank Act coming in 2019. Uh, it's an election year. I would love for it to be an election issue. I don't think it's very sexy to Canadians, to be honest with you. Uh, but uh, there is certainly go needs to be a review to see how things get done. And it's not just the sharing economy. You know, the, the, the federal government this summer uh, changed the regulation on... Uh, OSFI changed the regulation on credit unions so they couldn't use the word yeah, banking. Bank. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to me because mm -hmm. that's just what they do. Mm -hmm. That's the common lingo that we use, mm -hmm. but the government sticks its head in mm -hmm. and what it does is it stifles competition, mm -hmm. right? Banking's like, I akin it to sort of, we Google things, right? We don't search anymore. Completely. So I bank, it doesn't, you know, banking yeah. is an action. It's not a, it's not a bricks and mortar facility. And, and back to the, the belief system on how government comes up with this, you can't tell people what they think a product is. They tell you what that product is, and <laughs> right. the government needs to regulate within yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so, so it's a you know the belief that it's some sort of top-down approach on either the sharing economy or credit unions mm -hmm. or anything else is going to somehow change the fabric of Canadian society is just ill-informed. Mm -hmm. It's a waste of money. It's right. a waste of time. Uh, we need that review in the 2019 Bank Act to allow for the sharing economy to enter the space mm -hmm. uh, effectively. We need mortgages. You know, I want to be able to go and put a couple hundred grand, or maybe it's fifty thousand mm -hmm. bucks, yep. into a pool of mortgages. Absolutely. And I want to say yes or no whether I'm lending yep. that person the money. Yeah. I can do it through a private mortgage. Right mm -hmm. now, you could come to me and say, Alex, you need a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Here's you know fifty thousand dollars towards that mortgage. It's a mm -hmm. private mortgage. Our lawyers do it. It's good to go. If you want to do that same thing through a digital platform, yeah. it's very difficult to do today. Yeah, yeah, no, because of regulation for sure. So, but so really, it is. I mean, ultimately, right now, it's the tail wagging the dog. It's you yes. know, you've got a lot of you've you've got companies like uh, us that you know we're playing by the rules. Is we're playing by the rules, but there's no question in, in, that that there there will be moments in time where the logic and the rationale of what it is that we're doing is not going to fit the current system. And so so that issue of, you know, that traditional top-down approach just in government just isn't working. So is there examples in other governments, uh, you know, globally that have sort of changed, done the shift and are, are starting to see be more responsive and incorporate some of these uh, key policy changes? Yes, there is. And before I say that if I can <laughs> just add one other piece to, to sort of circle the uh, finish the circle yeah when the finance sector embraces the sharing economy there will be finances for the sharing economy yeah uh, because usually businesses uh, specifically in finance lend to what they know mm -hmm. that's true you know yeah and so there's a reason the big five don't touch a whole bunch of sectors because they don't know them mm -hmm. but there's other lenders out there that do touch those yeah there's no one who's in the sharing economy that understands it and therefore lends to it. Mm -hmm. So when we allow the way for the sharing economy to be part of the finance sector, there will be those who become specialists on the, on the, finance, uh, on the, on the financing of the, the sharing economy because mm -hmm. they understand it already yep. and the finances will be available. Right. Uh, this is what's happening in other countries. Other countries like Great Britain. Great Britain has two sharing cities, pilot project funded by the federal government. Uh, as I said, they've, mm -hmm. they've underwritten it. 
we, I would like for uh, Canada to go down that road. So okay, I'd like so, Barry to go down that yeah, road, quite frankly. Okay, yeah. so that's, let's talk about that because we're both sitting here in a pretty innovative city. I would say we've got some pretty innovative leadership. We've in got an innovative building. In an, a very innovative building, the creative space here in downtown Barry, and um, and you know, interestingly enough, this in and of itself is really the sharing economy because this is a co-working environment. Yes, this is. is where people just come, and we are all our members, and we share a space um, so that we all don't individually have to go out and find workspace. So that's kind of cool. We also have a mayor who is pretty forward thinking, I would suggest, um, in terms of where he sees the city going um, on, on the sharing climate. He's, he's open and interested in pursuing, my understanding is, ideas that solve real problems in the city through the sharing economy, like parking, for example. Every city struggles with parking. He's open to the idea of, uh, of a sharing platform like Rover coming in yes. and sort of addressing that kind of issue. Um, we look at Innisfil, who, you know, dis, you know, didn't implement a growing little community. Um, it didn't implement a public transit system, but instead entered into an agreement with a, sh with, with a sharing economy platform by the name of Uber. So we have it all around us. So, like, wouldn't it kind of make sense that Barry could be that community? That hub, yes. Yeah. And it certainly could. I think that um, it's, it's more than, uh, look, I, I think the city is very receptive, receptive at this point. And the mm -hmm. last thing I want to be do, want to do is create some sort of idea that they're not. I think it requires um, our leadership, not just in the national uh, or provincial governments, but also in local governments to say, we're going to own this. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in the sense that the government is somehow going to become a player in the sharing economy. I am no. I think they just have to be an enabler. I mean, that would, that, but an well, enabler, that would yes. also be like a, a drastic yes. problem, right? It, totally. Well, yeah, they, they wouldn't survive. <laughs> you guys ruin uh, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally, I agree. <laughs> government sucks. We can agree on that. Um, so, so especially with the sharing economy, yeah. uh, the the reality is though that um, when it comes to, to making headway and breaking ground, uh, it requires more than one-off startups to do yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. There has to be a coordinated effort. And um, I love what the city's doing on the, the taxi and Uber front. Uh, I congratulate the, the city of Barrie on that. I hope that we start doing that in other areas. Um, and I'm hoping that we will get a request from the city of Barrie at some point to, to be that sharing city, mm -hmm. uh, to, to request a pilot project from the federal government. Let's be something new. Let's yeah. be something better. Let's yeah. be something different. You know, mm -hmm. what's the difference between Barrie and every other uh, city that sits on a waterfront in Ontario? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a beautiful waterfront. Yeah, we're really lucky. Uh, we yeah. are super lucky. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, but I'm not sure what makes our water better than their water, you <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah. And so... The other thing about the sharing economy in our city of Barrie is that it is the creative class. Mm -hmm. We the sharing economy does uh, those who operate within it do take their cue from what they see, feel, and live around them. Right. These young people do want a good quality of life. Yeah. We have that to offer. We are a perfect space for this to start. Yeah. Perfect size. I would I would Completely. say you know the the ducks all line up for sure. One hundred percent. Yeah. What we need is a federal government that's willing to come in step in, a provincial government is willing to step in, and a municipal government to step in. One of the differences between Canada and Great Britain is this, is that in, in Great Britain, it's, it's basically federal than municipal. Uh, so, so they don't have so much government right, uh, right. in between. We are obviously a much larger yeah. country. I'm not yeah. sure how many times the size. I wouldn't want to guess, but it's going to yeah. be in the, in the tens for sure. Uh, so that's, that's, that's one of the things that we struggle with because we have to have Mm -hmm. uh, middle governments in order to yeah. to process things to make sure that the, the challenges are met on a yeah. but very, you know, but one of the things I, I think that um, I think that our geographic challenges it are um, you know we we still need the same need the same infrastructure right whether you're a small community a big community everybody needs certain things mm -hmm. and i think one of the challenges is in most communities and you hear it from like people who operate for example five they're they're the folks that that operate say georgian college for example operate uh, colleges in five different communities. Well, they still need resources and assets in all of those communities. I think what's interesting and in, and in, you know what I find interesting about the geographic challenges we have here because we are such an expansive country for the population is 
That's where I think the sharing economy really does make a difference because you can replicate the you know very robust, elegantly you know mm. implemented services on the in the sharing economy, whether your community is you know twenty five thousand or whether it's you know two point five million. So I think for me, that's the part where I think you know we as a country should absolutely be looking at this more yeah. than any other country because we have so many geographic challenges. Yeah, these geographic challenges are definitely a stimulant. Yeah. Definitely a stimulant for the for the sharing economy, um, especially when you consider it's not just the diversity of uh, the size of the community, but it's the the distance from community to community. You know, think about Thunder Bay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, completely. Uh, you, you know, yeah. uh, Sudbury. Uh, yeah. These types of places that are hours away from anything else. <laughs> Um, and it's not like the United States where you, you know, you, every two hours you hit a city of a million people. It's just mm -hmm. not, not. Well, and you way. don't have all that infrastructure of roads too, right? So, yes. so, so, you know, in the U S you can get anywhere and <laughs> there's just, there's so much infrastructure there because there's such a, such a, um, more concentrated population and cities are closer together and all the rest of it. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. That makes things a little easier, but I, I, I just, I really get, um, very excited when I start to look at excess capacity, um, and, and challenges in, in specifically in the far north um, around, you know, food distribution and um, power, like even power, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so we start to look at, you know, uh, even servicing individuals through power and, and the, the potential that the sharing economy has there in terms of disrupting um, our traditional power system right yeah. it's it's pretty incredible and, and oftentimes the sharing economy will actually protect consumers from um, what has been a, a, a government monopoly uh, you know taxi mm -hmm. services in many municipalities was a government monopoly in the mm -hmm. sense that or or a form of an oligarchical situation where you've mm -hmm. got okay well five people can run right. taxi businesses right. right so all you have it's the same as the big five banks yeah right becomes yeah. a situation that uh, is very easy for people to claim collusion within, mm -hmm. right? Or the, the the government itself sets the rates. Our energy sector, mm -hmm. right? Our yes. our mm -hmm. our uh, our hydro. Mm -hmm. um, same with taxis again. Mm -hmm. And I know it's difficult to compare taxis to to electricity, but yep. the reality is is that the 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 sharing economy will disrupt government run services mm -hmm. because the idea is there's people out there who are coming up with the efficiencies. Uh, quicker, faster, because they're looking for these issues versus a government which is just managing a program. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, so, yeah. so I hope that that's one of them one day. Yeah, for uh, sure. We can work so, so uh, you know, I want to thank you for coming today because I think you know one of the one of the key uh, pieces for me always has been you know this this excitement um, that is starting to grow around the sharing economy and you I, I had no idea right that there was um, that that there were folks um, in in government federally provincially and otherwise that were as excited about this and we're actually starting to advocate on behalf of um, those folks that are trying to innovate um, within the sharing economy so I'm really thrilled that you can make it out today because I know your schedule is busy and I really appreciate you coming and sharing your perspective on the sharing economy thank you so much for having me and I will let you know one other thing that our leader, uh, new leader Andrew Shearer, has talked to me about this subject many, many times and sees uh, a lot of opportunity and upside to the sharing economy. So hopefully we'll see some uh, policies demonstrating that in the future. Well, that's good. Just keep challenging that government, right? Keep asking those questions during question period. That's what we need. Certainly. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks.